Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. And by Sweetwater Digital Asset Consulting. Connecting new money with old money since 2018. Cake Wallet, Sweetwater Digital are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever by typing in monerotalk.crypto in your Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman has a free-flowing convo with Nikolai Binner, a German stand-up comedian and free speech advocate. The two discuss liberties being lost due to draconian COVID responses, Nikolai's personal experience with dealing with censorship, the necessity of a truly censorship-resistant form of money, how he came to learn about Monero, and more. Monero Talk starts now. All right. Nikolai, what's up, man? Yes, sir. How you doing? <laughs> good, good, good. I just recently discovered you, man. Um, somebody, Linus, is helping us out with getting guests. Uh -huh. and he's German, and he pointed us in your direction. He's like, there's this this dude. He's blowing up. He's blowing up on YouTube. Uh, yeah. He mainly, primarily speaks German. He's got a large following, uh, and he's a big Liberty proponent and seemingly into Monero. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, it's pretty accurate. So I was trying to do some research, but most of your videos are in German. But I saw you had some older ones, like your initial videos, yeah, were in English. Yeah, um, I started like my first video was about basically just talking about ayahuasca. Um, so that was in English because back then I, I, I thought I might become this online guru kind of person, you know, and. Um, I'm glad I didn't because I'm way too fucked up for that. And, uh, but yeah, so I started doing stand up um, and I had a lot of shows in English, but uh, yeah, I also had a lot of shows in German. So at the moment, it's going great in German. And let's see where it's heading to in the long term. Like, my, my, like my secret dream I have is still becoming this huge uh, English stand up comedian because I just love doing English stand up. It's just, it's just a little, I don't know. I like it's, it. Yeah, I was listening to one of your one of the one videos you had in English. It was a comedy skit. It was hilarious, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was about uh, ecstasy, right? The you, one. You might, you know, mind if I play it real quick? I got oh, you can play it. Sure, sure, yeah, play well, it. But uh, on, turn on the subtitles so people can read. The, that's with subtitles, and I think uh, people will understand it better with if you turn on the subtitles. But no, it was in English. But it was. I understood it. It was. Yeah, it was. It will, it's in English, but I think the quality, um, because it's not loud enough, maybe because people are laughing so loud, so sometimes you don't really hear me. So just turn on the subtitles because I actually okay. activated um subtitles. Let me see if this. I can do that. Do we yeah. have? A... I hope it works. If not, play it without subtitles. We'll be fine. I thought it was hilarious. Right, here we go. Oh yeah. Here's the problem with uh, ecstasy. Like every time you take ecstasy, you're just way too nice to people. You really shouldn't be nice to. Like you could be on a techno party and take a straight punch to the face from a total stranger and feel nothing but love and compassion for you. <laughs> like you're standing around there, like woo! And suddenly fist comes flying at you, like oh, oh, dude, whoa, what the fuck? Oh, I feel your pain, brother. <laughs> I wish you nothing but love and light and a spiritual journey. My wallet. You want my wallet? Sure. Take my wallet. The universe is abundant. It, it doesn't matter if you or I have my wallet because separation is just an illusion created by the ego. What? 
You want to pee on me? Of oh, man, of course. Let's, come on, pee all over me. Oh, that's so refreshing. Oh, what's that smell? Oh, did you eat asparagus? Oh, that's, that's such a healthy vegetable. You're, you're such a cautious consumer. Yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> I love it, man. Wait, hold up, hold on. Uh, thanks, there. man. Thanks. I thought it was great. So you doing a lot of that? You do do a lot of stand up, or that was uh something? Yeah, you that's like the. I think there's still um. I can still hear something, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, actually, yeah, yeah, playing yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Um. Yeah, I still do stand up at the moment. I can't because they have in Berlin, they have these, or in Germany, all over Germany, they have this rule that you can't um, do shows when uh, you can only you can do shows, but there's only people allowed who are either vaccinated or who have a proof of recovery. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to support that shit. So um, I'm not doing shows at the moment. So yeah, I'm, I'm being showless. So I do like my my online stuff, uh, which is blowing yeah. up, uh, fortunately. But uh, yeah, uh, sucks to not be on stage every day because I'm used to that yeah, and I really yeah. need it. And now I can't do it, and that uh, I miss it. But yeah, sometimes you just gotta do the thing that feels right. And yeah, maybe maybe you could do some underground shows. Did you ever consider doing that? Is I that happening did, at all? I did some. Uh, yeah, I already did some underground shows, and uh, they went well. But it's always, you know, it's always a hustle because you got to like connect with certain people and then you got to take care that like no people from outside of a certain network um, know about the show. So, you know, police doesn't show up and shit. And then you're there and you're playing your show. And the last time was like, I don't know, like five or six days ago and I was in Hamburg and I had the show, you know, and the, I mean, I played and it was great, but the whole time I was like, oh, shit. Shit! What if the cops show up and just you know blow this thing up? You know, it's like it's it's gonna be cost so much money. Like the fines are huge, and so like, I feel like when I was like sixteen selling weed, you know, that's how I feel again. Like doing some fucking like <laughs> it's just not comfortable, you know. It's did, you, weird. did you ever think it would get this crazy, man? It's no, no, no way. I never thought like. I never thought I would play an illegal stand-up comedy gig. It's absurd. It's insane, man. It's a, when, when did you first like start to feel like things were headed in the extreme direction with all this? Um, when, you know, there, um, at some point in Berlin, there were like this, these huge demonstrations, right? With like shitloads of people. And um, I uh, like uh, on Facebook, I just wrote a post like i'm glad people go on a street and you know and do something finally and i said i, I said something like i'm glad germany um in germany things start moving um and then immediately after a few minutes uh some comedians from the berlin stand-up comedy scene they said that i'm i'm they said wow i don't know how to how, what the literal translation of that would be but they say basically i'm making brotherhood with the right wing and i was like what the fuck are you talking about i was like that's so weird where is this reaction coming from why is the the climate so extremely aggressive and then i was like okay something's weird and then i started watching news because usually i don't watch news because i don't like to cons like i don't have no television i'm trying to avoid it because i don't want this to be part like i just think it's a lot of ne negative shit on the tv right but then i started watching the news to understand these these reactions and th then i saw like oh my god they're like they're like framing people as nazis who demonstrate ag against the corona measurements I was like, "What? What is that? That's insane! I've been there. Like, I've I, I was there. Like, the people demonstrating against Corona, like most of them, they were like hippies, you know, and old moms and people with children, you know, who are who, who don't want like the, the the children's future to be to be messed up and stuff like that. So they they were just like normal citizens, citizens, just regular people 
from every from every country from every with every color every religion every race every age like everyone was there and then you see in the tv how these people get framed as nazis and right wingers and all that stuff and i was like that's that's absurd that's so fucking absurd i got to like and then i then i got pissed and angry and um and still i'm a comedian so that kind of that anger connected with my humor and then i started <laughs> doing this format and it started going viral and uh, yeah i actually i kind of copied the format from um andrew schultz like andrew okay. schultz right. is doing uh, is doing this as well he's like when when the lockdown came he couldn't go on stage anymore he couldn't play shows so he just did this online format where he's like basically sitting in a setup like this and just like speaking punchlines you know just being hilarious about like things that's going on in the world and i was like that's perfect i want to do the same thing so i i, will, I started do, do, also doing that and of course writing my own jokes my my own topics so mm -hmm. yeah and it works great so far and you do a lot of like that one was obviously english you do a lot of other english stuff or that, that was really all i was able to find in english um no at the moment i mostly do like everything i do is german at the moment and uh, at the moment, I'm trying to find out um, if it's possible to, like, at some point, I want to um, maybe let, at least visit, like, Austin, Texas for a while and mm. then maybe move at some point because, like, I already have this feeling I probably live there one day because I want to pursue stand-up comedy in English way more. At the moment, I got to be here in Germany. It feels feels like it's the right thing to be here and do German. But in the long term, I definitely want to switch to English. Is that like the comedy capital of the world right now? Because like Joe Rogan's over there. I feels like it to me. Like I think the, the the comedy capital is probably still New York, but um, New York blows right now, man. New York is. Yeah, you don't want to be there at the moment, right? No, no it's horrible. Where it's horrible. are you? You're in New York right now. Yeah, I'm in New York. I live in Queens. I don't know how familiar you are with with the New York well, area. Well, I've been there. Yeah, Queens you is one of the boroughs. Queens. Yeah. Yeah, I've been to, there, yeah. Lived on Long Island. But yeah, it's just the whole the whole scene. I mean, it's uh, there's like so much virtue signaling with people like, you know, on the left that are happy to be ma you know, masked, double masked, you know. Oh, masked. yeah, yeah. It's like who wear who wear who have like the bicolor masks, like one black, one white mask, so you can see that they're wearing two masks. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know, the, the dude that's going for a jog with the mask on. And like when, when we had the low point, when, you know, now it's back up again with the Omicron. But I feel like some of these people during the low point, like they didn't like they felt like almost like lost. Like, oh, man, yeah. they're like they, they got so used to it. You know, it's like yeah. they didn't know what to do anymore when it was like things were getting better. Yeah, it's also I think the mask is like people start liking it because it's another layer of security they can even they can hide even more you know you're just like this you're so incognito you're walking around like this and especially people are maybe don't feel very confident confident about themselves they really like hiding themselves so now they have a great excuse to like hide their whole identity yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like subtle things too it's like you stand next to somebody in the supermarket and then they you know take two steps away from you like you know they're trying to say like you're standing you're like it's fucking toxic on, guys. yeah it's hard it's horrible it's horrible yeah I, I actually so i had covid in march 2020 mm. and so that was like super early over you know that was like one of the earlier cases over here i mean and i i definitely had it according to you know i lost taste and smell i was sick oh, yeah. for like two weeks you know it was like flu and yeah and, um and then i te you know te back then they did the tests that was like when they first started testing like took two weeks to get the test results i tested positive and then i went and i did an antibody test because i was going to donate my plasma and i had you know all the antibodies and then i just recently got it again now well, oh. so was, I mean, I was sick, very, you know, I was like flu again, you know? Yeah. I always got the flu. Like, I always, every two years of my life, I'd get sick. And, like, I don't know. Like, that's just something that would happen to me. Like, every mm -hmm. year, two years, maybe I would be like sick for like, you know, like pretty sick, yeah. like on my deathbed, but, you know, to the point where like I had to pass out for a few days, you know? Yeah. And so I got, I got it, tested positive, and then a bunch of people in my family got it. But some of them were double vaxxed. Some of them had the booster. 
And, yeah. You know, they got it just as bad, if not worse, worse yeah. than me. Um, so it's like, what do you even like? Who do you even believe now at this point? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I just know my own experience. You know, that's the only thing I'm believing yeah. at this point. You know? Yeah. But I also don't bad. trust in that whole like in the whole thing. I also had COVID and was so like, of course, like you can't speak for everyone. I can speak for myself, but for real, it was like the mildest flu I had in years. <laughs> like I just had the like no taste, no smell thing. Yeah. So that was it. I was just walking around like I, I could e e eat like my own poop. I wouldn't have tasted it. Like, but that's pretty yeah. much it. And after like a week or two, it was normal, back to normal. And I was like, wow, that was that was it. Really? That that's the oh okay okay. Yeah, that's that's the like thing. Shut down right. society. No, but I, you know, obviously a lot of people died. You know, a lot of people with pre-existing yeah. condition. You know, underlying conditions. True. Older people. I you know I had family members like great uncle passed mm. away. But you know yeah. You know, yeah Nine years old you know and mm. but so i just i just can't wait for perception to change and for us to start to go back to no i don't know what it's going to take at this point like if you would have asked me i i would have thought we would have like perception would have changed already it's just seems to be taking longer and mm. like, there's just always just a new level to it right there's always just like the it's not it's not good. Do you think it's going away anytime soon? You think we're going to like. I'm thinking about time? it. Like it's a very good question that I don't have any answer to. I wish, but it's, I feel like the human, the human psyche is so weird and so like somehow open for manipulation. It, it, it's like almost like it craves it. I got the feeling people crave to be lied to and people somehow crave to be ruled over somehow. And I don't know why and I don't know what it is, but it seems to work out so good, especially yeah. in Germany. Like the, the climate here is so like, like this country is so divided, like society in this country is so hardcore divided. I was in Costa Rica a few months ago and of course they have covid there as well and some people are vaccinated and some aren't but you don't really like it's not really like that big a topic right you're walking around there uh people say hello sometimes they say when you walk into a shop they sometimes might ask you to like if you put on the mask sometimes they don't but no one is like like in germany like this like this militant about it you know and like people here, like like families divide here. Like I heard, I, I get so many mails and messages and sometimes comments from like, especially old people. I get the feeling that especially all like the older generation, they somehow don't buy into this whole thing as as qu in the, into the hysteria. I mean, of course, there is Corona, you know, not denying it. I'm just saying like the the whole the whole yeah hysteria around it. I think. Uh, people with like a little more life experience they're like a little careful they're like yeah i'm not i'm quite sure if this is <laughs> if it should be that way and but the younger generation they're all like like not all but a lot of them super motivated and they're like the like, they're line fucking hardcore yeah which is because a lot of them are young and healthy you know it's like what do you like guys come on yeah and they just yeah, especially you yeah it's, it's crazy and Especially what they don't seem to care about is, is their liberty, you know, like that, that they yeah. don't seem to be too concerned about. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. Are we, are we just crazy? Are we the crazy ones that we're like, we're liberty first? I mean, I'm starting to wonder, are we, are we uh, on the side of crazy? I, I, I can't. You know, if, if this would be like, a, if this would like be a pandemic in the sense we thought what a pandemic was, then we, we would be crazy. You know, if you, if you like a pandemic is something where, you know, in every family, like 50% of the family just died. Right. <laughs> you, you see know? people on the street, like, you like, see people, yeah, you see people yeah. on the street just laying around, just fucking dying and no one wants right. to touch them and stuff like that. But in this case, you are like, like the, the government tries to make you get the vaccine. And if you don't get it, you, you, you can't go to work. You can't, you can't, like, they take away your rights. It's like, really? Is, like, what kind of pandemic is that? 
where you have to force me like if this would be a, like a pandemic pandemic like you would uh, can i can i curse is it allowed yeah of course man yeah, Go ahead. yeah like you would suck someone's dick to get a vaccine you know if this would be like a, like a pandemic pandemic where you where in every family people just die you you would say, of course give me that shit i don't like you don't need to take my rights away just give me that shit But, right, you you'd be lining up for it. You'd be like, give me whatever yeah. you got. I don't care if it's yeah. experimental. I just I, yeah. I want to live. Exactly. Right. It's, <laughs> it's absurd. Like so, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know where this is going. I hope things are getting better. But what I, I think at, from what I think at the moment, it seems like society is splitting and dividing. So there will be the people who, um, yeah, I, I, there will be the people who say yes and aim into that shit. And there will be the people who try to like um, install an alternative society uh, with alternative, yeah, platforms, online platforms, alternative resources, alternative, yeah, maybe currencies like people using Mon Monero, for example. So I think, yeah, it's kind of, um, yeah, splitting. Yeah, that seems to be what's going on. I mean, I think this this wave, I think, is going to open up some people, start changing some people's perception because there are those, like I said, that are double vax, triple vax, boosted, and they're still getting it. And they're yeah. looking around and like the guy, the person who maybe isn't boosted or not vaxxed at all, yeah, isn't getting it as bad or to the same degree. And they're going to be looking around. They're like, wait a minute, I did all this and I'm still, you know, still getting sick you know i'm not yeah. not going i'm not dying but it's like i'm just getting sick as just as sick as the my, my buddy who like refused to get it so that's yeah. got to be opening up people's eyes but yeah well you're uh optimistic <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah I, i've been optimistic about monero too like i don't get that one either you know i'm just disillusioned about that as well like people are just like You know, they they don't really seem to care about privacy and, uh, mm. you know, it's just like whatever. No. But, what's, what's your take, man? What's your take on Monero? Well, I used it um, a few times to buy certain uh, things. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, shall not be named? Huh? Things that shall not be named? Well... I don't know. This is yes. like I don't know. Can I get in trouble? Like I, I uh, saw well, you did ayahuasca like a hundred times or something, right? Is that really oh, yes, you did exactly. it a hundred times? Yeah, I think almost one hundred. It was maybe like ninety or something. But I was like, if I if I did it ninety times, let's just go for the clickbait and uh, <laughs> call it one hundred times. That was over the course of like of like what five years mm, or something? like three years or something, I guess. Wow. Okay. Yeah, three or four years, maybe something like that. And yeah, it was way too much. And uh, yeah, but uh, to the like the Monero, I used Monero to order some stuff on the internet and um, not ayahuasca, but uh, things that also um, are good. And yeah, I think um, I think it's necessary, like people need it, especially like as like. Um, Governments get more and more crazy and more like tyrannic in some sense, especially in these times you need a private currency, like a private, like to, to, to be able to, to pay without everyone knowing what you buy and how much you pay. It's like, like, even if it's not something illegal in a, who knows where we are, who knows what's going to happen in like eight years or nine years what society is going to look like. And um, I think privacy is going to be super important, no matter no, no matter in which country you live. You just need privacy. And I think it's a basic human right. Like no one has to know what, what I buy and when yeah. I buy it and where I buy it. It's like none of your business, right? Yeah, ba basic human right. And we're at the point where... You know, rather than relying on governments, we're just going to take it for ourselves. That's what I think what's great about like Monero, right? It's not about asking the government to to give us our privacy. We're building a technology that guarantees it to ourselves without their permission. You know, that, yes. that's and that that's the only way it's going to happen at this point. And if anybody thinks otherwise, they're they're being completely foolish, you know, yes. the government. The government's not so in the business of, of providing us privacy. Just they're, they're... 
I mean, I don't know how how guaranteed the privacy of Monero is. Like, I think in some cases, if they really work on it and try to like uh, find out what you bought and when, and if they're like, if if they got you on their little list, they mm -hmm. might still, with some effort, find out what you did or what you bought. But um, as far as I know, and I'm not a cryptocurrency expert, but as far as I know, uh, it's like the the best we have at the moment when it gets to privacy yeah yeah i think that's pretty accurate obviously i I believe that that's why i do the monero talk show and you know hardcore believer but yeah you're right i mean if they're pinpointing you as an individual and mm. they're going after you mm. um they'll figure out things because they'll figure out things around it right so not mm. not so much breaking the protocol and and breaking the encryption but anytime you're touching the real world in any way, you know, seeing you out there, getting you on video camera, whatever, you know, anytime you're you're interacting with with your computer, to, you know, there, there's things that can be done. Um, so it's it's only as good as um, the technology itself. But around the the outskirts of it, on the outside, I mean, that's outside of the control of of Venera, right? And there's yes, that's hard to to keep a you know to overcome. Yeah. But it's it's still better than nothing, you know? And what's nice about it is it's it's like user-friendly. It just works, you know? It's not like you got to do certain things with it. You just, you know, get yourself some Monero. And when you use it, it's private. It's not like, you know, you got to jump through hoops to make it work. It just it just yeah. works. That's, that's important, too. Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's so easy to use. So when you used it on, you know, in dark markets or whatever, or um, was it, is that how you discovered it? Or it was it um, like, were you, you know, shopping around and you saw that vendors were accepting it or <laughs> new yeah. Monero in the first place? Yeah, I, I was like, um, I think I was, I was, uh, I did some research. What is the like? What is the coin or the most private crypt uh, cryptocurrency out there? And then I found out um, it's Monero. So that's uh, why I was looking when I was shopping online on the darknet. Uh, who are vendors accepting Monero? And then that's what I what I chose. These are the guys I was like, yeah, choosing for the transaction. Awesome, man. Awesome. So how'd you become such a big Liberty guy, man? Like what, what was your uh, pathway to that? Have, is, have you always been that guy? Like we're saying like, like there's, you know, mm. a lot of people who could kind of care less about it. Unfortunately, that seems to be the current majority. Uh, but mm. then there's people like you and I, have you always been that guy or is that something that you arrived at? I think, um, I've, I think I experienced like severe limitation in my life a lot, um, which is more like um, psychological, you know, there were so many uh, areas in my life where I did not feel like I can be myself. Um, I, I don't like, I felt like super unconfident for a very long period in my life, you know, not knowing who I am, having like, uh, like struggling with so many things, struggling with self-confidence. Um, and yeah, often I felt like, when I was talking to people, like, I'm not myself. Why can't I be my fucking self? And there were there were some, like, you know, a lot of patterns and things that were programmed into me and probably all, all the trauma and stuff like that that always kept me somehow in, locked in place. And, and th that created such an intense pain, uh, which was in some way probably productive because it also created a very strong longing for freedom you know to, like i wanted to be free of my bullshit <laughs> i wanted to be free of my negativity i wanted to be free of the patterns that keep me locked in place so freedom at some point became like the most important thing for me or like extremely important because i felt so fucking unfree <laughs> so like the this experience of feeling super unfree created this longing for freedom so i think that's how i um became a freedom guy and uh, of course the the mushrooms also helped <laughs> 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 like swear to god like i know 
when yeah, I did uh, mushrooms for the yeah, first it's... time when I was 16, uh, I, I already knew before taking them that this is going to be something spiritual. So I also already had like the, the mindset to enter this thing, you know. And uh, well, they showed me somehow that everything I believe and everything I thought who I am and everything I thought about the world um, were just programs that were programmed into me. And I could see that very clearly, you know, mm. and it was spectacular because for the very first time in my life, I could have the, like the ability to step outside of that matrix and see this prison that I call Nikolai. And I was like, holy shit, that's like, I, I've been living a lie my, the, the first 16 years of my life. And so so that also like probably boosted the longing for freedom even more because once you see the bullshit you're like nah i want the other thing <laughs> you know so i think yeah it's a part see, of that yeah my, my struggle with that is you know s same realizations as you but then it's you got you got to deal with everybody else around you who is looking at you like why, why are you like all you know amped up about being so like you know like they you know say not everybody relates to that and i feel like yeah. they kind of look at you like what's what's the problem man just like like yeah you know, just gonna, yeah, gonna yeah, just live your life yeah, just, go with the flow. <laughs> yeah, just go with the flow but it's like yeah uh, yeah um well i think the more um at first definitely uh, i think you're right um especially if you just start going down this road and you still have uh like your your old people that you're hanging out with, um, they might go like, yeah, well, what the fuck? What's what's wrong with you? Like, what what happened? And everything, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, where where is the old Nikolai we we used to know? <laughs> I can't recognize you anymore. But at some point, um, I think if you go down that rabbit hole and you go down there for a few years, you will attract people who will be like you, right? To like who love your insanity who love your, your your longing for freedom. So at this point, like all the people I like I'm friends with, they're cool. And they also they also have this desire to be constantly, yeah, to, to constantly evolve, to grow and uh, to be as free as possible. So yeah, these are just the people that I'm friends with. So I don't feel that alien anymore. I mean, I still feel alien and like on this planet kind of, but like my bubble I created, uh, yeah, I got like I hang out with my aliens. We're all cool, you know. We speak the same language, so that, that works. <laughs> these are people that you primarily like met online and stuff, or these are just like real world mm -hmm. friends through like comedy. And They're or... almost all of them are real world friends I met through um, um, like as a, like spiritual workshops and spiritual work. Uh -huh. A lot of them, uh, some of them I just uh, know since like four years already but they're still cool and um yeah so i think yeah no i, I there are there were no online friends i just met them th throughout the course of my life somewhere mm -hmm. yeah can I, can I hang out with you guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure man just uh, come over like berlin's waiting for you it's a shithole at the moment i don't know if it's any better than new york but you're uh invited <laughs> Berlin really does have this liberty loving scene though. I mean, or like, you know, this, this group, I know like whatever you have, you have the, the mainstreamers, but the, the underground liberty loving scene is, is strong in Berlin, right? It's very strong. Well, that's what I thought. And I think that's, that's my impression. Am I wrong? That's like, that's, that's a okay. picture people have. Yeah. But the weird thing is that especially the ones that you would have considered to be like alternative and like cool, somehow they are weirdly very Nazi about Corona. Like not all of them, but right. a lot of them. So you're so, like, what the? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so, especially the comedy scene. Uh, and th that's also the thing because you said like, are, are your friends like, are they like comedians? And, and the weird thing is, no, <laughs> they're not. Like there are comedians, there's one, one or two comedian friends I, I would consider like closer people I hang out with. And I trust a little more, but um, the majority of the comedy scene is somehow extremely, yeah, um, obedient and um, also very 
like very anti me and anti the comedy I'm doing. So I gotta sh like crazy. they really hate what I'm doing. It's, it's weird. Like I was, yeah, I thought actors and comedians and artists, you would all always think of these guys, you know, as these cool alternative guys who have this different view on the world, you know, who step outside the matrix and you know and. But no, they're not. It's it's crazy. So are they like, know. are they kind of, um, when you say certain things, are they like calling you out on it and shit? Like well, even they, well, they called me an anti-Semite, uh, some of them, because um, I, look, there is this saying in German, um, not the saying, but we had this tower in a city in, uh, in Germany, in Dusseldorf. And they pro they had a they had a light installation and they projected the sentence vaccinating equals freedom on it like a huge light installation right yeah. and in the concentration camps on the entrance of the uh, concentration camps we had like a uh, working working makes free mm. it's like working equals freedom kind of as. So I said, like, it doesn't very translate very well now that I'm explaining it in Ger in German, but in Ger in English, but in German it's like almost the same. So mm -hmm. I said, um, they they are in a joke. I said they already um, designed the new the new signs for the um, for the vaccination centers, and it and it says uh, vaccinating makes free. So like working makes free. What they had on the concentration camps i said vaccinating makes free just this little joke was fucking enough to get me cancelled on probably 90 percent of the comedy shows in germany really yeah like even the like even the big players like they are like formats that uh, one format is called nightwash hmm. it's like the biggest thing we like it's like the most important format in like we have hmm. and um, even they canceled on me. I don't know if it's only because of that joke. I know because of that joke, the, the entire Berlin scene canceled me or like 80%, 90% of them. Um, but then later also like the, the bigger, more important uh, venues said they won't work with me together. And uh, yeah, so oh, wow. that's the price you pay. So it's so difficult. I mean, comedy is supposed to be, that's supposed to be, you know, the sector, the arena where anything goes, right? And obviously, it's comedy, right? You don't really mean what you say, right? Like, it's the whole point. That's supposed to be, like, the most censorship-free part yeah. of society there is, right? Yeah. It's always been that way. Yeah. And it's been a beautiful thing because of it. It allows people to say things freely and, you know, get away with it, right? And it's like, they're just commenting on society in in a way that people can relate and then without being hung for it because it was like it was a it was a joke it was a joke yes. guys. it's, it's kind yes of exactly and um but i'm not surprised to be honest i'm really not surprised it's just like if you if you're here and you feel the if you feel the vibe especially like in the comedy scene and, and, and all these scenes and you start like really feeling the vibe there, it's, it's aggressive. And um, so I wasn't that surprised that they canceled me. So I was already kind of expecting it. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Did you see we're throwing an event here? We're throwing a Monero event in Miami. Did you, I don't know if you <clears throat> came across that. Oh no, I didn't see that. Yeah. We're throwing it in Miami on, on April 7th. It's called Monerotopia, but we we had an incident where one of the guys we were inviting to be a speaker. It's got Chris Guy. Have you heard of Chris Guy? Have Chris Guy. I think I heard the name. I don't know what he's doing right now. He's in Canada. He's like really about, um, you know, he's against the vax mandates, and it's you know he's making a lot of headway, and it's 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 great. But mm -hmm. he's been accused of being, a, you know, an extreme right winger um well so, like everyone <laughs> yeah. but to the point where people brought up like some crazy things that he said like quotes and like but like him saying it in social media like his picture and him saying like and this isn't comedy this is him being like you know oh okay super like 
racial things and anti-Semitic things. And it was brought. Also, he, he really said that. Well, I don't know. I don't know if he said it or not. I mean, I asked the guy and, he, and his response was, I'm not responding to it because I shouldn't I shouldn't have to respond to it. I was like, but well, can you please just respond to it? Because like people yeah, are accusing I, you of this. I'm like, if I was accused of this and it wasn't true, yeah. I would just like, you know, I would yeah. say whatever it was. It was a joke. It was out of context. It was this. Like, I would mm. say something. But his thing is, no, I refuse to respond. Like, basically saying, yeah, I did say those things. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's sad. <laughs> and it was really tough because I'm all about all about free speech, you know, and but Monero yeah. is free speech money. And we're doing this conference and I wanted this guy to come because I wanted him to come talk about the use case of Monero for the purposes of essentially being able to fund, uh, you know, a minority political group, uh, you know, somebody who's who's fighting the good fight. And Monero's is good in those use cases, right? Like you want to you mm. want to receive funding. You don't want people to be able to stop it. You don't want those that are donating may not want to be seen that they're donating, and uh, okay. you know he may not want everybody to see that he's receiving these funds. And um, and so I thought he'd be, he'd be a good example of that. And because he recently got interested in Monero for that purpose. But then there were those in the Monero community like, yo, you got to cancel this guy. Look what he said. And it just put us in such a tough spot, such a tight spot. So it's like, mm. it's tough, man. It is hard. So what, mm. we, what we ended up doing is we like recreated the event. So during the day, uh, it's curated. Like we pick who the speakers are for during the day, regular speak. Mm. But then we added this night portion where anybody can sign up to be a speaker themselves. Oh wow! And then, okay. so then we take ourselves out of it. I'm like, I don't know yeah. who you are. We won't find out till the night you come. And then we just have them put a down payment in Monero so that we like know that they'll show up. Like we yeah. said, you know, just send to send us to Monero so that we. Otherwise, we'll have everybody spam it, right? And they'll be like, I'm going to come in. Yeah, answer. right, right. And then we'll like, if you show up, you get your two Monero back. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're going to come and talk about. As long, I just want it to be, you know, about free speech and Monero. If you know, but at least keep it to that. But mm -hmm. other than that, so I don't. So then it removes me as a gatekeeper. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Well, that was good the only luck solution with that. I could try to come up with. You know, I'm trying yeah. to trying to work with people. You know, sounds trying like to, a cool solution. I mean, to keep uh, free speech alive. Yeah, sounds like a great project. I I, I hope it works out good. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it'll backfire. I'm sure it'll be. <laughs> but yeah, man. If you any uh you come to the states at all or are you are you been able to with everything that's going on um well so, so i i would love to um i would love to go to texas um and like just see what the vibe is and um but at the you moment can, uh, maybe, so we can have of... you, maybe we could have you come to the conference do like uh you know a sketch or something do a comedy comedy uh, <laughs> in miami in miami yeah have you ever been to miami no it's like if it, there's two places right now that you want to be it's it's texas and miami like well, that's yeah those are the two spots in the u.s where like uh -huh. is still alive so it's 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 a nice vibe it's a nice miami vibe. is florida right yeah yeah it's oh yeah okay place. yeah true so yeah okay yeah that's the two yeah. places where you want to be yeah right i heard 100%, 100%. that oh um, wow yeah that's uh, it sounds exciting when is it again in april in april april 7th yeah, let so, me. We could, you know, we could talk offline about it, but just throwing. Yeah, it out. we could talk offline about it. <laughs> so let me let me see. So the ayahuasca man, I want to talk a little bit more about that because I I've been curious about it myself. Um, mm. what, you know, what, what, like what's uh what's the process if somebody were to uh you know think about doing it? Like, what, what would you recommend for you know noobs looking to? To, to potentially <laughs> on that road. Tough question, man. Um, I think so. I mean, I mean, if you have like the feeling, like if there's something inside you, like like a somewhat deep interest, then it might be there for a reason. Um, but I like back then when I was all hyped about it, when I was still doing it a lot i was trying to like make people do it or like at least tell them how great it was and recommending it mm. and uh, at some point i i quit doing that because 
I think, um, well, you can open rooms, you can open doors, you cannot unlock again. You can't, you can't close again. And also, Sorry. it's not like, even if you have like a very good, great ceremony and you feel like, wow, I learned so much and it was great and very beneficial and positive and maybe healing and cl cleaning, cleansing. Um, even then you might, and, and I know this sounds kind of freaky, but even then you might invite something into your system you don't want to have there. Because um, when I was in Peru, like I was there for like seven months. Uh, in, and when I came back after a few months, uh, uh, when, when I came back to Germany, after a few months, I really started struggling with a lot of shit, like mentally and physically. And um, I started going uh, to healers, to energy healers. And um, when they started like treating me, it was like an exorcism. Like my body would like, and I was like, I would do like fucking like, and like scream and um, start cursing in like weird languages kind of. So um, I don't know where this came from. I don't know if this is, and there's of course two like theories where that might come from. Uh, theory one is like, would be like a very dry psychologic theory is like, these are like, um, parts of your psyche that are kind of split, that are kind of split, um, that which which is something that can happen d during trauma, right? Mm. So um, there's something which is not integrated, and then it's 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 this is like the uh, this is like the way of in integrating it somehow. Um, the other thing is, yeah, it was just fucking demons <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. That, Some... That's when you took it. That was like after you took it. You're saying that was at a different. That was when I was back in Germany um, oh, okay. and when I went to these energy healers and when they started treating me, I went to some like really strong guys who learned that like one man, for example, he lives here in Berlin. He lived 11 years in India, like nonstop, just learning how to like, like work energetically. And he's really strong. And every time I was like at his place and he was like treating me, I swear to God, like my, my, my my body would cramp and turn into every direction and like my limbs would do all this shit. I was like, and I was like really doing like, it was demonic kind of. So I asked myself, where is this coming from? Like, like how, like what invited this energy? <laughs> Wait, so, were there substances involved in that or was just like, no, just, no substances going... at all. Uh -uh. No what substances. Did he do? No. I mean, that's, that's, that's wild that it had that effect on you. Like what, like what, like, is he just like, what is he doing? Is he, he's is like, he... um, well, there's, I know a few people who can, who can do something like that. I, in Germany, I know three people or four people who are capable of doing stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. and of course it depends on what your issue is, what, what effect it has on you. Right. There's people who just like immediately go into some very, whew, like a very strong level of peace and a very strong like they just feel their heart and they're like ooh and they but go he really like, deep he and like they... hypnotizes you or it's just like no what's like no not at all so um he just like uh like i just lay down on my back he has this uh, therapeutic uh kind of um i don't know what the english word for that is it's not a bad but you just lay there you know like a like, massage bed you know type I mean. thing yeah exactly yeah the kind of bad thing and uh so i'm laying there and he just like kind of um, <clears throat> enters this, um, <clears throat> this, yeah, this, he just enters this space where you can, from which you can heal people, which is like kind of, um, yeah, connecting yourself to something higher. And then just, and then you, then he stops interfering with his own personality or with his agenda or with his ego or whatever, but he just lets himself be guided kind of by something. And mm. then he just starts doing stuff. And he's like effectively treating people with cancer, with all kinds of diseases or with all kinds of psychological shit. And um, so, yeah, wow. it's it's very different. Uh, you just start uh, reacting to it like uncontrollably? Oh, man. Yeah, I was just laying there and immediately my whole body was cramping and my and twisting and like and like spectacular, spectacularly weird. 
like almost like Emily Rose movie. Like I almost cr crawled up the uh, the the wall backwards. <laughs> it was fucking weird. So and I had these kind of sessions. I had them like seventy or eighty times. And um, he had he also described like after treating me that sometimes his bones were hurting and stuff like that. So he mm. said there's something like really strong in my system, and you know. I don't know if that's coming from the ayahuasca. I cannot like prove it because how could I? I don't know. But it's just a theory I have because ayahuasca opens you up for energies, right? And yeah. I know I when I was in Peru, I was surrounded by sometimes really, well, people with like one of them was a murderer who killed two people and he was an alcoholic. And I, I was working with him sometimes, you know, and he also took part in ceremonies and one time he even prepared my medicine I was taking. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah. And the other guy, he was some dude who uh, who actually, well, he wanted to kill me, which is another story. But this guy actually wanted to kill me. So, um, well, he obviously didn't, but he wanted to. I was on his death list and all that shit. It's, oh, it's, you're it's like, like story. you're pissing him off. You were like, you're just yeah. Well, him. he was there. He went there because his. Blood. So his parents sent him into the jungle because they were afraid of him because he started like um, because he's very big, very strong. And he started um, he um, he used to be in the military also. And he was just as bare of a human being. And um, yeah, he freaked out at home. So he started like destroying like the room he was in. And um, then at some point he started like collecting like knives and weapons and starting make started making weird comments towards his parents. So then they were afraid of him. They were like, "Fuck that shit!" And they sent him to the jungle, exactly <laughs> to the camp where I was working. And uh, he was on uh, neuroleptics. You know, neuroleptics is that a word? Like the like the stuff you take. Uh, okay. the, the German word is neuroleptica. So English would be neuroleptics. I think it's like. Right, but some like kind of you, drug. Yeah. If you kind of, if you have like, I think, uh, sh sh schizophrenia and like kind mm -hmm. of these attacks, then okay. you take that so you can like stay in, like kind of normal. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when he was there, he was off the mats. So he was just without medication. And the first day when he was still kind of medicated, you like I could talk to him. It was everything kind of cool. And then the next day, he like like he was like a little calmer and weirder and then the next day he stopped talking to me and it got worse and worse and worse and at some point he was like when i was sitting there he always like he pulled out his, his knife in front of me and always like started opening and closing it and opening and closing it for like 10 15 minutes just looking at me like a and this is like psycho. when you're doing ayahuasca and stuff this is like during all of that it was not during the ayahuasca ceremony itself, but you know, sometimes after it or during the day and all that kind of shit. So, so and yeah, and he was also taking part in the ceremony. So, um, basically, and, and that was not the murderer guy. The murderer guy, guy was some someone else. But I was so so basically, I was sometimes surrounded by people who probably not had did not have the best intentions for me, and um, so. I don't know. I cannot prove this. And this is just like now this would be a spiritual theory. But maybe because I was so open, I opened up for some kind of energy or whatever the fuck. I can't prove it, but yeah, that's what it might be. You. That then yeah. entered my system. And so this is why I had to solve <laughs> like for years, you know. So, um, yeah. Holy shit. All right. So you talked me out of the whole ayahuasca thing. <laughs> no, no, no. But also, of course, of course, there's also people who have like. I guess you just got to do it around the right people, right? I mean, let's. That's, isn't that like rule right number people. one, man? Isn't that like rule number one? Nah, yeah, you, you have, have to do it with the yeah. right people, exactly. But yeah. I, I felt protected when I was there somehow. Weirdly, I felt protected. Yeah. And space. the very first time I did it, uh, like I was in Peru for uh, two times. The first time I was there when I was 18. And yeah. uh, when I did it, like it was so important for me because i quit like i quit smoking weed i quit taking drugs i quit doing all the shit i did back then and started mm. like really like eating healthy working out and uh, like finishing school so it had like huge benefits so i don't want to talk you out of it like it can yeah, be absolutely. really beneficial you can um it can be like a very life-changing important and great teacher plant
medicine. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Cool. I'll have to do some research. Any of, the, any of these guys except Monero? Ah, <laughs> well, um, if you like go to some Western kind of association or organizer, you might be able to pay, uh, pay him in Monero, but the shamans in the jungle, I don't think they're that advanced, man. No, they, they want cash. No. They want cash. They, they like cash, yeah. That's that's the place to do it, huh? In Peru? One of the places, yeah. I think now it's like spreading over the whole world. I don't really know if it's necessary to go to South America or Central America. But if you want like an old school, original, authentic ceremony, yeah, it's probably the jungle. And Peru is a good place for that. Yeah, definitely. Colombia also. Very cool, man. You have um, you have any shows coming up that you want to throw out there, or like you said, you're not really doing much right now. If you want to like um, put the word out, um, I don't like at the moment. I, I I don't because of the of the regulations here, and I don't want to support that. So no, I won't um, exclude healthy people from my shows. Uh, so I, I'd rather play no show than doing that. Um, yeah, so no, at the moment, no shows, only online, unfortunately. So this is also something that creates this pressure inside me that I want to, as quick as possible, go to the U.S. because I want to get some fucking stage time. So Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, online, I mean, that's got to suck compared to in person, right? Because yeah. you can't, you can't yeah, feel like strange. any feedback from the audience. Yeah, right? yeah, it's priceless. You charge for the online ones? Or is it, uh, do you like do, to sell tickets for it? Or it's just... Uh, no, I just upload you, uh, YouTube videos, okay. and um, but I I can live good now because uh, people donate to me because at the end of uh, by the end of every video I say hey guys if you want to support what I'm doing, um, then you can donate to me uh, either via cryptocurrency or um, PayPal or bank transfer and there's people doing it and supporting it because well they um, they appreciate what I do and they like it so. I'm glad there's people who like it, and um, so yeah, I'm I'm very fortunate actually. I have this because otherwise I would be completely fucked. <laughs> yeah, if you ever want to do like an English-based one, um, you know, we'd, we'd be eager to help promote you and get the Monero community to you know tune in and send you tips. That'd be cool. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah. If there if there are people like listening right now. Who can tell me, for example, um, something about the the scene in, in 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 Texas or maybe even Florida? Like, I would also go to Florida if there's like some great uh, possibilities to do stand up. Um, but I think just uh, like yeah, I think Texas would probably. I think Florida is very expensive, right? So uh, probably uh, prefer. Yeah, Texas. Miami, but I think I don't think Austin's super cheap anymore either. I think maybe it used to be, but like now it's like everybody's running over there. So I can't imagine mm -hmm. like. Yeah. You know. Yeah, well, I can see why everyone's going there, right? <laughs> um, like yeah, no, like, nobody else is picking up on why, this. They're like, hey, why, why you, is everybody running over why there? Why are you? Why are you staying in New York? <sighs> it's easier said than done right i mean i have i have family here i you know mm. generations of, of new yorkers you know my my parents and my my grandmother and my sisters and their kids and my daughter and you know it's oh wow okay fiance and her her entire family so it's like yeah. <sighs> i'm all about you know it that's that's the hardest but that's what people don't realize right like you could pick up and leave but you know you, you you have your family you know you have your time yeah. it's easier said than done so like the way i look at it is i want to try to fix new york right because like if i'm going to be stuck here why can't we make it i mean it, it used to be it used to be a great place it used to be yeah. like the you know austin right but even bigger and better right it used mm. to do that it used mm. to walk around new york city and it was like freedom was in the air like whatever happened you know crazy things would happen you know and i get you know i i have to believe it's gonna come back but it just doesn't have that vibe anymore man people just yeah. seem to really care about the freedom liberty thing so i mean yeah my, my hope is to try to work on changing it and bringing it back here because i don't really see how i'm gonna 
pick up and leave. I mean, I, I, I talk about opting out and I do that through Monero, you know? So like I'll stay here, but you know, I'll, I'll, all my, my money will be in Monero and I'll, I'll at least have Liberty in, in those means. Yeah. Um, but the complete picking up and leaving and going somewhere else, just easier said than done, man. When you, when you yeah. have family and everything, you know? Yeah. Oh, true. True. Yeah. Like, are you, are you in a position to just like just run over to, uh, to Texas? Yeah. I have no one. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, I like, I mean, I have friends. I have great friends. I would break my heart to like leave them, but you know, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. Tight in, you know, come from Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. And I think, um, I don't know, like, I'm just trying to like, follow my my heart and uh, if it's leading me to wherever the fuck if it le if it's leading me to the north pole then i go there <laughs> i don't know yeah I, I, i'm at that you know that's that's what i like to think and i am that person but at the same time it's just you know it's like i have an italian upbringing on my on my mother's side and, i know, just wanted to ask I, you that if you have an italian family. upbringing <laughs> my, I swear my, to God. Mom's, my mother's side is all italian so it's i just knew like, it it's integrated you know you can't you can't you yeah. vibe Italian. You can't walk away from the family, man. You know. It's yeah, yeah. I can see that. You, 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 like you vibe Italian. I just wanted to ask you that, like a few sentences ago, actually, if you have some Italian descent or something, because you got the, you, you, yeah. you somehow remind me of you know Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah, I love that guy. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> Amazing. He's fucking hilarious. And I don't know why, but your face reminds me of his face. Oh, thank you. I, I take that as a compliment. I love that. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I always have my, my, my grandma, my nana, like her voice in the back of my head, no matter what I'm doing. So it's, I'll never achieve liberty, man. I, Nana's always there whispering in my ear, you know? Yeah shit man so, so i feel i feel like we should uh talk a little bit about crypto before we close it out a little bit more is there any sure. is there any other uh crypto stories things you have i mean are so you accept you accept monero for donations right yes Do you, are have you gotten involved in crypto in any other ways have you like are you have you gone down the rabbit hole so to speak in terms of like understanding the tech and understanding the differences between things like bitcoin versus monero just curious just a little like um no i'm not a like i'm not uh i'm not a cryptocurrency freak who understands okay. <laughs> the technology i just know that the blockchain like the the, the bitcoin blockchain you can, you can just immediately see every transaction how much and when and where it went after it and wh where it came from so it just, you can just see it right and uh, that's not the case with uh, monero that's pretty much all the tech i know and <laughs> that's where it's well stopped. you understand more the most man you understand more. you have all these b you know like the btc maxis have you heard that terminology and stuff like these bitcoin maximalists and stuff bitcoin what bitcoin max maxis bitcoin maximalists so no, like people that know. are die hard hardcore bitcoiners that are like bitcoin, oh everything else everything else is a shit coin you know yeah okay i know so they exist like, they oh they exist and like they're you know all amped up about bitcoin and then they just they just ignore like the things that you brought up that are just so matter of fact the fact that it's like transparent it's traceable they just all manage to kind of sweep that under the rug you know they're, they're all like <laughs> well liberty loving and like you know it's like so important this is a tool for for preserving our liberty yet they just seem to not care that it's like potentially moving us towards a dystopia where you can track and trace everybody's transaction. Yeah. Well, Have if you you're a fanboy, you're a fanboy. You just got to love the shit, even if it's not. <laughs> yeah, that's what's going on. That's what's going yeah. on. I mean, I'm guilty of it too with Monero, but I feel sure. like at least I'm, I'm behind the right, you know, betting on the right horse here in terms of. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, in the long term, yes. I, 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 I still don't really understand one thing. I don't get why the Monero chart isn't exploding like because the weird thing is a lot of people use it because it's like a very standard transaction coin on the on on the darknet and the darknet is huge so i don't like it's 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 often used so i don't really understand how it's possible 
that the uh, yeah why why the chart isn't like why it's not like bizarre man it's bizarre I mean you know there's some theories so first of all it's it's harder to get Monero than a lot of these other cryptos it's like it's been de delisted from a bunch of exchanges because they don't want to deal with it because of regulators mm. um. So there's that, right? So like even in New York, are you familiar with Coinbase? Have you ever heard of Coinbase? Yeah. That's like sure. the number one exchange in the US or one of mm -hmm. the biggest ones. And but they know, have so coin they have they have uh, a Monero. Coinbase? No, they don't have Monero. They don't have Monero. They never added it. They never added Oh it. shit, yeah. I mixed that up with uh, Binance. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, Coinbase. Coinbase. So like Coinbase. Here in New York, like most people, like average Joes, like, you know, everybody's into crypto now. So like, you know, they're going on Coinbase to buy their their Bitcoin and their Shiba coin. And I think like all those things are on. But like, you know, we talk, I talk to people about Monero, but they're like, well, how do I get it? I'm like, well, actually, they're like, how do you know, can I get it on Coinbase? No, you can't. You know, it's there are ways to get it. It's just not as easy. And I think that that's probably the biggest factor which slowing down price the price uh because it's just not easy for people to connect their bank accounts and just start dumping money into it it's just not mm. as easy as these other coins mm. but that's indicative of the fact you got to ask well why are these exchanges not adding monero they're adding mm. everything else monero has been around longer than most coins you know it's a true crypto why aren't they adding monero because regulators are concerned about it and they don't want to have to deal with them. They don't want to have to take that extra risk. Um, and that, and that's what's going on. And mm -hmm. so, and then there's also the theories that uh, exchanges are selling paper Monero. So this idea, like you'll go on something like Binance, you'll buy Monero, people are buying Monero, but they're, they're not pulling it off the exchange. So the exchange is selling people Monero but it might be Monero that they don't even have, right? Because they could they could say, oh, all right, now you own Monero. As long as you don't pull it off the exchange, they could sell they could sell Monero all day. You know, they could sell a, a billion dollars worth of Monero. And as long as people don't start pulling it off the exchange, it's kind of in their interest to essentially pretend they have it and just sell it. Meanwhile, it's just numbers on a ledger. They're saying you have Monero. It shows on your account when you log in that you have Monero. But what but what happens if people pull it off the exchange? Exactly. Well, that's you know that's so that's what the Monero community is trying to get that meme out there, right? Telling everybody like pull your Monero off exchanges, you know, because every, if everybody does it, then it blows up that whole scheme because there's just so much easy um, money for them to make because they could just sell paper Monero. And because oh. it's not traceable, it's hard to then see. Like with Bitcoin, you you pretty much know what wallets are con controlled by exchanges. You know, it's like kind of public knowledge. You could you could tell like oh that wallet's controlled by Coinbase. That wallet's, but with Monero, there's there's no way to look that up on the blockchain, so you can't even mm. see. It, so they can get away with that. So those mm. are kind of like probably the the two biggest theories or reasons as to why the price might not be going up as much because it's used it's like one of the one coins that actually has a use case you know yes like I mean, none of these other have a use case so people are jumping through hoops they're getting their monero they're using it but it's not being pumped it's not being pumped you know so i i mean i think i think you're gonna just see overnight you'll see some incident or something that's gonna that's gonna change maybe you know be revealed that an exchange is doing that or There'll be something because mm. like they can only keep it locked down for so long. Yeah, know? I think in a few years, yeah. like I think maybe in that case, we just got to be patient. Yeah, um, and because I still like I don't know how much I, I invested something in Monero because I just like Monero. Yeah, so um, I was like, I want to have it, even if it's not like developing greatly at the moment but i was like i just want to fucking have it and at some point maybe at some point like it will you're up I I listen man i mean you know not investment advice but i think you're on the right you know the best thing to do especially because you seem to i feel like you, you you understand what's going on uh yeah just just slowly accumulate i see i see what's going on as an opportunity um mm. it's just the price is being suppressed all right 
you know more yeah right it gives you more it gives you more time to slowly accumulate it and where then, would you recommend uh, where would you recommend um buying monero um well so cake wallet we're sponsored by cake wallet it's, it's a good i don't know if you're familiar with cake i heard that yeah I've, okay so you cake even wallet. have an account there cake wallet i know it yeah cake yeah. wallet um it's you know it's really good open source monero wallet for ios monero and then they have an exchange built into it so it's a good way like you can buy you know you can buy crypto elsewhere and then you can instantly exchange it for monero through cake and then they're mm -hmm. soon going to be adding the ability to natively buy monero hopefully they're going to get to the point where you could like do the whole thing hook up your bank account and buy it they're not they're not there yet but they're getting there um and then other big ones like kraken kraken's a big exchange mm -hmm. so they, they sell they they're one of the large exchanges that sell monero um and you know like i mean in Europe, I don't, I don't really know what's, you know, Binance, I think, like you said, right? So you could, you could buy it there. Yeah, you can buy it there. Yeah. And, um, but uh, with Binance, you don't, you don't have the keys, right? Well, you pull it off. You pull the Monero yeah, off. You pull it off. Right, yeah. right. Like there's been stories mm. of people trying to pull it off and like they're getting delayed and stuff. But the best thing is do you buy it and you pull it off and you hold it and you hold it on your, you know, hold it on your cake wallet or whatever it is you. And is the cake, is the cake wallet, like is the exchange rate? Can you recommend it? Is it like good or is it very like if you, if you, if you like get, I don't know, Bitcoin and then swap it to Monero is like you pay a high fee or is yeah, it okay? there's fees because you're exchanging. So yeah. it's, that's not the best. So like the other, uh, another thing is like local, have you heard of local Monero? No. So that's like a way to buy it peer to peer. So it's like a website where it'll, you'll find other people that are selling Monero. Uh, definitely in Germany. I'm sure it's, you know, pretty big. Probably. Over there. Yeah. And you could buy it with cash. That's, that's, that's a really good way to get it. Right. Cause now you're, no KYC AML, you know, so you're not going through an exchange. You don't have to give up all your personal uh, uh, information. And, uh, you know, you got you to gotta make sure you, you know, use local Monero correctly and you, you find the, you know, find the right people to exchange with, but you could effectively purchase then Monero with cash. Oh, that's pretty cool too. Just have it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's a little bit of a premium there too when you buy buy Monero with cash. Usually the price I think is is a little higher, but that's that's a really okay. good way to get your hands on it. Um, I asked well, myself, I asked myself what. Sorry, uh, you, you can finish. I didn't want to say or just exchanges or just traditional exchanges. Like you know, there's hardcore Monero people that are like, oh, you shouldn't even use an exchange because they know who you are. But, you know, with Monero, it's like, that's not the biggest issue because once you pull it off, it doesn't matter. It's like, yeah. it's like taking cash out of a bank, right? So mm. the bank knows that you had 10 grand, but you're yeah. like, you show up at the bank and you're like, you know what? Close my account. Give me my 10 grand cash. They give it to you. And then they don't know what you do with it afterwards. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, like with Bitcoin, all these other coins, when you do that, they do know what you do with it afterwards. So that, yeah. that makes that not an ideal way to get it. But with Monero, actually, the KYC AML isn't as hurtful to mm. you know, the use case for Monero because you could just do whatever you want with it after and it can't be tracked and traced. I wonder what will happen if, uh, like, this is, again, like the conspiracy theory uh, scenario, but um, what happened if, if we have a, black, uh, a blackout and we really have some kind of, you know, like no electricity for a week or, or a month or something like that? And I wonder how that will affect uh, like cryptocurrency if it's like if you still have your shit. <laughs> or if it's well, not yeah, like... you would still you would still. Well, if you're on if it's on an exchange, you're kind of screwed, right? Because you don't have that. Yeah, access. right. Uh, if you pulled it off an exchange and you hold it on your own wallet and you have the keys to it, do you do that? Like, do you have your own wallet set up and stuff? You should. I, I have a I have a um, a hardware wallet. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you're doing it the right way. So I mean, electricity goes down. That 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 crypto is there. Uh, now you won't be able to easily use it. Use it, yeah. You know, but uh, unless you're like just like literally passing around the private key to some, you know, or you maybe there's a, there's other ways that people might be able to do it. They'll come. Um, people will will quickly figure s some other things out. But uh, you're not going to lose your crypto if you're yeah. holding your keys, even if the you know 
the the like you know electricity goes out whatever even if it's for for weeks or something yeah as long as you hold those keys you're not going to lose the crypto yeah great yeah i, I, bought, I bought some i bought some silver for the uh for the worst case so if shit goes there down go. south i can still maybe i don't know get i don't know get a blow job for a silver coin <laughs> i don't know <laughs> you might be better off i don't know buying uh i don't know water food. or something <laughs> <laughs> food water uh, let's go for the blow job and i'll just die <sighs> yeah i mean those doomsday scenarios it's like it's like not only is crypto broken everything's broken. <laughs> did you like, did you say doomsday doomsday scenarios yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I understood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understood Tuesday scenarios. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, it happens every Tuesday here. Oh, yeah, yeah every yeah. Tuesday, you know, you like... <laughs> we call them Tuesday <laughs> scenarios. Blackout, and then you buy blowjobs with your silver coins. It's a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> we call it Tuesday over here in the U.S. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, when, when shit hits the fan like that, it's, you know... Crypto isn't gonna really help you. Gold coins, yeah. silver coins. Like at that point, it's like you know, you just need food. Yeah. But all this is this is a great convo, man. I appreciate you coming on. Glad glad we did this. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, man, and uh, I'll follow up with you. Maybe I could get you to come over to Miami for for the conference. Yeah, that, that, that would be. Cool. Yeah, um, let's talk about that. All right, brother. I'm gonna close this out. Cheers, man. Oh, you want to you want to quickly uh, tell people where they can find you? Oh yeah. Um. So yeah, if you want to check out my shit, just uh, look for my name Nikolai Binner on YouTube. Um. I also have Instagram, but they keep like deleting my shit and like regu like down regulating me. So YouTube Nikolai Binner and um, Odyssey. I don't know if if you you guys know Odyssey. Like it's yeah, we brought, yeah, this will be broadcast on Odyssey. Everything we put out also goes on Odyssey. So, ah, oh, perfect. Yeah, I'm yeah. on Odyssey, and there are uh, there is maybe one or two videos more that I don't have on YouTube because YouTube deleted them or like blocked them, so you can't access them from Germany, uh, only with a VPN. Blah blah blah. But uh, they're on Odyssey. You can see everything from everywhere. So yeah, uh, press that subscribe button, <laughs> and uh, yeah. All right, brother. Thank you, man. Thanks, man. Cheers. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guest or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.